So um, before we jump into kind of some intros and the meat of the webcast, I want to go over the agenda and what you can expect. So I'll pass the time over to our great uh, pro users of Cloud App. Um, give them a chance to give their backgrounds and where they're, where they're working and how they're using Cloud App. Um, then we'll go through each of those people and have them give them a chance to do some trips and tips and tricks and share some live demos of their favorite pieces of Cloud App. Uh, I'll review some takeaways and then we'll close up with some Q&A if there is any. Um, Michael Roberts from my team will be answering questions along the way. Um, but we'll also try and save some time um, if we need it. Also, this will be recorded and emailed to everyone who's registered, and you can also find it on YouTube later on if you lose that email. So let's go ahead and introduce our guests. Uh, today we have um, two great external power users and then our product lead, Finn, from CloudApp. Uh, we have Max from SAPIO, Minal from Gainsight, and then Finn. So I want to go ahead and, and give Max, um, well, each of these guests a minute to kind of explain what they do, um, maybe how long they've been using Cloud App, and uh, anything else they want to share. So we'll start with Max. Awesome. Thanks so much for, for having me on. And I currently run brand and field marketing design and operations for SAP IO, which is the early stage venture arm for SAP. And what we do is invest actually in companies like CloudApp, including CloudApp, um, and, and accelerate startups that are in the enterprise software space and, and help them you know, scale with, with SAP. Um, our accelerator has locations in, uh, in eight major cities, um, which makes you know, my job at a global level um, a little bit challenging to to handle when it comes to communications and and really you know, getting the entire team involved. So Cloud App has really been an awesome tool um, that I've been using for the past year or so in order to help drive asynchronous communications with with my broader team. Awesome, thanks, Max. Um, you know, from Gainsight. Hello, everyone. Um, very nice and pleased to meet all of you. And I see a lot of people coming in from um, every part of the world. So it's very, uh, very amazing to see that, you know, there are people from Dubai as well joining us, because I know that it is pretty late. Um, I'm um, the Client Outcomes Director in Gainsight. Um, and my role there especially is um, more around customer success. Uh, so I'm here to make sure that the customers are getting value from, from Gainsight. Um, and then Gainsight also is a customer success company. So we do sell customer success solution and we have very established thought leadership. Um, and uh, what we do is also ensure that our customers are in turn making their customers successful. So it's kind of meta. Um, and I've been using Gainsight since I started my role as a CSM. So around four years now in Gainsight. Um, and it's not just me. Uh, in fact, there are multiple people from product, from support team, from services team, from engineering team um, at Gainsight who are using Cloud App very regularly. So very excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was telling Minal earlier that I had uh, Nick, their CEO, on our podcast um, a few months ago. Um, a huge fan of both Gainsight, SAPIO. Um, both before I started working at CloudUp and uh, during my time here. So I'm really excited to have them both. And then last but not least, our friend from the north, Finn. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Finn or Serafin, however you prefer. Um, I am from Montreal, Canada. Um, I joined the great CloudUp team about uh, a year ago now. Um, and what I do is basically leading the Mac um, and the growth team. So what we try to do is really ensure that whatever your workflow is, so from sales, marketing, support, um, we take some customer calls, we try a few variations of the product, and we just ensure that we optimize your uh, asynchronous workflow. Uh, so whether it's through videos, whether it's through annotations, um, there is a lot of ways people use the product. And that's why I love these kind of webinars too, because you know, even I usually learn a thing or two from the panelists. 
Uh, so it, it's a really great position to be in. Awesome. Thank you. And Finn is going to share some, some recent features that uh, him and his, his great team have added that um, we think are really powerful. And uh, we've also already had a lot of great feedback on. So just so to make everyone aware of some new features. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Max. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Max, if you want to start sharing, then you can drive for a minute. Perfect. So, you know, as I mentioned before, one of our my biggest use cases for using Cloud App is enabling my team, um, you know, both of you know people that work within SAP as well as the founders that we um, are enabling externally to access trainings and, and content that's relevant for them um, in a time zone that makes sense for them, right? Which is on their own, on their own clock. And, you know, since I've started using Cloud App, I've really been able to build an interesting library um, of easy to reference content and demos that I can share with both new team members and existing ones to get them on board quickly, um, or quite frankly, to remind and refresh people's memory when it comes to certain um, processes or, or tips and tools that, that they need to do to do their job better. And, and I think what really makes this work great for, for me is that the content is really bite-sized and I can create multiple um, recordings instead of creating these longer courses that I would have had to do in the past. So the, the time between a request coming in and creating a new piece of content is shortened tremendously. And, and even when I do get those one-off questions that I might not have an existing canned answer for, I can take that as an opportunity to add it to my library. Um, so instead of just responding directly to that one um, you know, person that has a request with a you know, screen video or, or setting up a meeting, I'm actually able to save that. And then it will get added to our team's library where the rest of the team could actually learn from that experience that that single person might have had. Um, my favorite current feature within Cloud App is the ability to add a button and, and or call to action to the different pages. Um, because what I'll, and I'll show you in a second during my demo, the, the biggest thing for me is really adding Cloud App as a layer um, in the process of communicating with my team between um, either an email or, or a meeting or a phone call and the action that I'm asking them to take. So when it comes to things like filling out complex forms um, or collecting information that, that is important for a business process, if I'm able to get my team or, or anyone who we're working with to take that second to take a step back and actually like listen to the, me walk them through um, what information I'm asking them for, the logic behind you know, why, um, why the form or whatever process they're about to do um, has to happen, the results that we're getting are so much better um, than in the past where we kind of left it to them on their own and people would just put you know, NA in a, in a response box and you know, not give it their all. So here's my, my first example um, of how I use it with, with my team. And I'll show you to you a little bit bigger. So in the past, when I would launch a, a new tool or product within, within my team, it would normally start with you know, a meeting request, which is really hard to schedule when you're in you know, eight cities in every single time zone. And there'd be a meeting request, you know, probably half the team would join um, half of them would be sleeping because it's, you know, 10 p.m. Or, or midnight. And, you know, the other half is zoned out or working on something else. And, you know, after that, we'd send out a recording of the Zoom. Nobody actually watches recordings of Zooms. And we'd launch the tool. People would have problems. And then I would get a million requests for help. Um, where, where with this process and with launching this newer, um, our content library tool, I try this new approach where instead of just doing this, you know, email meet um, support model, I created like almost like a consumer level experience for our internal teams to launch the product. So instead of it being, you know, boring outlook, we used our marketing templates for our team. We sent out, you know, here's what we're doing, but then created a section around all the feature and demos that embedded um, the cloud app videos and recordings in it for the team. Um, and with that, we were able to see like who was clicking through um, and there was no direct link to the new tool. They had to go through this first. So for example, when you clicked on one of the things, it would take them to, to my screen recording where I walk them through the training and then it will open up the tool um, for that person. The, the cool part with this is that because there were multiple sections, if we're onboarding somebody new and they would never get that email. So I was able to send them 
um, the cloud app collection of all of the different trainings, which then you know creates this easy to click through sort of experience where they can go through all of the different steps um, to get what they needed. And each one kind of opens, you know, if there was a relevant link would open it for them. The, the cool part is that the tool that I was launching didn't just run on a PC. Um, so with this one, one of the other cool tips and, and tricks I was able to do is use the cloud app app on my, my phone to record what the experience on, a, on the phone would actually look like. And a lot of times or, or within, you know, at least within SAP, not every person has a company phone. Um, and especially if they're not in a, um, a field facing role, they would never have access to this, this app. So they wouldn't have visibility into how their work was actually impacting other colleagues within the company. So I was able to kind of replicate that experience for folks who wouldn't normally be able to um, kind of see the fruits of their, of their labor. The second use case is along a similar sort of workflow, but is how we work with, with um, enabling founders. So the same thing here, um, you know, we have over 300, around 300 startups in our portfolio right now. And I actively manage, you know, between 50 and, and 150 of them at any given time. And, you know, finding times with, you know, if it's hard enough to find times with our teams within SAP, um, you can only imagine how hard it is to get founders on a call um, at once. So with this one, what I, I started doing was sending emails to, to founders that are, have deepened their relationship with SAP through, through partnering on our app center. And instead of, you know, just sending out the email where we would have a pretty poor um, response rate of getting a form filled out, I was able to provide the founders with the link to the cloud app recording of me filling out a sample form to get them, you know, the brainstorms flowing. And from there, again, it would use that same call to action and take them to our form um, that sat within Airtable. And, and this is another, you know, example of that process that worked, you know, really, really smoothly and also helped us avoid all of those, you know, instant reaction questions that we would normally get um, from founders where, you know, every single one of them would normally respond independently. Hey, can we set up 15 minutes? Can I set up 15 minutes? And then, you know, before you know it, my calendar is booked for multiple weeks solid. Um, where this gave them that answer to that question. And of course, some of them might have, you know, follow-ups. It's not a, you know, totally self-service because there's a human edge to it, but it definitely helped give people the, the confidence that they needed to kind of move forward with the process without um, having me as that um, barrier of entry. It's awesome. Uh, Max, you touched on a lot of, a lot of different things. Um, the buttons, uh, certainly, video and also the iOS app, which um, hopefully soon in Android world, um, we're getting there. But if you have an iOS device, um, you can download the app now. And also collections, um, which is a fancy term for folders, but it's a way that you can share and quickly find all those, uh, organize all those files that you're creating with Cloud App. Cool, thanks, Max. Um, any other comments? I, I think we're we're good to move on to Minal. Right, I'll share my screen. Yep, go ahead. Somebody decided to uh, blow their lawn just right now. So if you hear leaf blowing, please excuse me. Nice. <laughs> cool. Everybody can share my screen. Yep. Um, so you must have heard the saying that um, if necessity is the mother of invention, then laziness must be the father. Um, and I started using uh, Cloud App because I was just too lazy to type. Um, let me give you uh, an example. So Gainsight is a very versatile, um, very, very, um, you know, it, it can become very complex because there are so many things that you can do with Gainsight. And many times uh, what you want to do can be embedded in multiple links, you know, in multiple clicks. Um, and when I became a, a CSM, it took me a couple day of, of days to find out that I can't bring myself to type uh, when I can show. Um, so when my customers ask my help and, you know, a typical question, can you tell me how to edit, um, you know, a certain text in a, in, at a place? 
it would require me to to go and make sure that you know i am going into the right uh, like i'm typing the right uh, sequence of events and i'm clicking on that tab and i'm ma- making sure that i can uh, write the entire set of instructions or i can just send them you know and go and actually drive myself crazy because i will always feel that i have missed a step um or i can just show them how to do this so why can't like why type when you can show so that was um, the, the reason why i started initially using um cloud cloud app because i did not want to drive myself crazy if i did not miss a step and i can show them how to reach there through a you know through a simple gif or a gif um and save myself and the and them a headache uh, well, and by we, the way we need, we need to stop there for a minute you got to you got to choose a line you know gif or gif Oh yeah so I have a I was about to say this that I'm not going to educate <laughs> anybody on this I will call you know interchangeably just to mess up with your mind I'm going to call I'm going to interchangeably use gif and gif because I know that there are people who uh, are on both sides of the uh, of the issue here <laughs> Okay that's that's fair you're like Switzerland you're just going to stay neutral on the topic Yes 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 <laughs> and get all the money of the world That's okay Awesome Um so what's my team's biggest use case and as i said that you know in gainsight we are using um a, a cloud app for multitude of um, you know multitude of use cases um first thing is efficiency and scale so use gifs in place of you know email communications a picture is worth 1000 words several minutes in my case i you know and it saved me uh, a carpal tunnel syndrome because i can't uh, type so much for the life of me so using a a gift recorder to create library um you know as um as the previous speaker talked about and uh, of visual answers for your customers and keeping that so that whenever a customer asks a similar question you can just use that um and then we also use it for our community you know uh, we we when we are talking about a, a specific feature a new feature that is coming in um both internal and external communications we are you know accurately um for example report trying to report a bug uh, to a support uh, to a support team member internally and i imagine um you know me going into the support ticket and typing in and then they are not able to replicate it because they missed a step how easy it is to actually just show them by replicating it in where you are and then just sharing that that gif to to, to the person concerned um using it in community to and release notes so we use gifs in you know when we are um uh, sending out release notes uh, to tell people how to reach to a particular functionality how to use this new button or a new feature that gain site has just released um in you know in order to access a particular functionality so it is a mini demo creator you are basically not jumping into meetings you are in your know, to show something you are actually uh giving the experience of the customer to feel the product uh, to view the product um but at the same time you are making this uh making this scalable so it's learning by showing um and then how that has improved uh, my team well we have better informed customers i have multiple customers who have um you know who have come back and to, uh, told me that this is something that has really helped me because you know i i love that you are sending me like a a 5 second or a 7 second gifs instead of uh, you know uh, an email or asking me to jump on a call so this has been very effective so we have better informed customers uh, it saves time you know it saves time because you are uh, communicating through through pictures through through short videos so you are not jumping on a call and you are not having this back and forth on hey how do i how do i access how do i replicate um how do i how do i know how a certain feature works so it's very you know very useful that way um and as i said it also uh, it actually helps for scaling because uh, you are creating libraries of this and so that you can use it uh, and multiple team members are doing it at the same time so they are collaborating creating a library of this uh, of this gifs and ensuring that you are um you know you are using that that library to 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 answer questions from customers internal and external stakeholders um, at the same time cool um so i am going to uh, exit from the the presentation mode here and talk about my favorite feature of uh, cloud app so one thing that i use 
uh, started using actually um, is uh, you know posting comment and sharing right from here. So if I if I open a link, um, I can add it to the collection, but I can also you know add a comment which I really like. Um, and then the usual, you know, I come here, I can annotate as necessary because there are several things that are happening in a screen. So I can annotate as necessary or blur out, uh, you know, blur out um, whatever I don't need, um, create like a, a kind of a spotlight here on what I want to use um, and uh, share it with the customer. So I can basically focus uh, on what I really uh, need the customer to look at versus, you know, looking at the entire screen. So it does help um, better communication. And of course, you know, I like adding um, my own touch to it by adding uh, smileys here and there. Um, so yeah, this is, um, this is how I use Cloud App. Any questions? That was really great. Thank you, Minal. Um, I'm just looking at some of the comments. Yeah, everyone's saying thank, thank you both. Uh, lots of good stuff that you shared. Um, lots of thank yous in the comments. So um, yeah, this is really great. Um, common, kind of a common thing is, is showing versus telling. Um, asynchronous communication, really trying to save time and effort. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm too lazy to type sometimes too. So <laughs> videos help, especially with designers. I, I used to do these like massively long emails uh, before I came to cloud app and it was just so hard to get tone and context in there. Uh, and I always create confusion and that is now gone. So I'm grateful for that. Yep. Um, we'll go ahead and turn the time over to Finn. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stay in the lane of, you know, showing versus telling being the best at uh, being asynchronous. So this is what cloud app is all about being the best tool to communicate, whether it's sometimes via GIF, or it's an annotation, or uh, it's a video. So I'm gonna show you actually the use case that Joe just referred to. Like he wants to uh, speak to a designer. He wants to give a bit of feedback. He could maybe do a screenshot, add some notes, um, and that could be enough. Or um, another way is to record a short video. Um, so the one, it's, it's actually one of my favorite feature. It's one for the backstory. It's when I, I was interviewing at cloud app, that was my test project as well. So I'm really happy that a year later, you know, the test project is live and it's helping a lot of customers already. Um, so this is video annotations. Um, what this does is really add another layer to your videos. So whenever you record a video, usually you can just, you know, explain what's on the screen. Sometimes I see a lot of users, you know, circling around with their mouse, uh, sometimes clicking or highlighting. Uh, one solution that we added in the most recent version of Cloud App for Mac, so it's gonna come soon for Windows. Uh, we're actively working on it. Um, so let's say I'm starting recording. Um, I can either use Command Shift 6 uh, if you like shortcuts or just go through the UI and click record. Here, I'm going to record my full screen with my face and hit start recording. So you have a little countdown to get ready. Um, and in this use case, I am Joe. I want to give some feedback on the website. Um, so we recently added this new feature at the top. It's a small uh, pen icon, which you can toggle. Um, and you can select different options here. So let's use uh, the arrow. I'm going to change the color to, uh, to pink. Um, and as I'm talking, as I'm giving uh, uh, feedback to the designer, I can really highlight some parts of the screen much better uh, than I could before. Um, so here, I, I really love the arrows just because it's really clear what you need to be looking at. Um, there is also uh, the option to change the color and the duration. So for the duration, basically what this does is whenever you start drawing, after a few seconds, it just disappears. So as you're recording, you're maybe recording a two or three minute long video. You don't want all of these annotations to start piling up. Uh, so you, you can keep talking uh, and you can keep highlighting different parts of the website. Um, the other tools that we added, so these tools are really great if you wanna uh, you know, showcase different parts of the website. So there is uh, the arrow, the line, the free drawing pencil, which is pretty great sometimes when you want to just, you know, circle something or draw, add a little personality. Um, 
you also have the highlighter tool, which is pretty great, especially if you're talking about text. So let's say you want to give some feedback on copy, you know, let's change an annotated image for something else. As soon as you're done, you can, you can click on finish. A link will be ready to share instantly. And another new feature of Cloud App is instant video. So right now, that link is already viewable. There is no like processing or uploading time. Everything is done in the background. So if I replay the video, I'm going to remove the sound. But as you can see, you can see all my different annotations. And it's, it's a much better way to communicate. So it could be a one minute video to designer with a bunch of annotations. And you can really get the tone of what I'm trying to say uh, whenever I add that context. Um, another feature, so really what we're trying to do at CloudApp is be more collaborative. So we add a bunch of different features or enhancements left and right to really make uh, your experience easier to share with others and also for others to start interacting with you. So here uh, there is a video. Let's say I send it to the designer. The designer has their own account here in a separate tab. Um, I'm looking at the video. Uh, it's great. Um, and as Minal was saying, we now added the ability to add comments. So what we can do is just get, uh, you know, watch the video and then get typing. So this is great. Go send the comments. And the owner will actually get a notification in app that a comment was added on that drop. So this is great because you can put a link, let's say on Slack. A lot of times users put it on Slack via email in a bunch of different places and the feedback gets lost sometime. Um, so it's great that with comments, the feedback can stay next to the content and the conversation can uh, keep going. Um, so that's it for video annotations and comments. Uh, there, there's a lot of different options that you have as, an, as a creator. Um, so as you can see on the right of my screen, you can decide that some comments, some, some uh, videos cannot have comments uh, if you decide to. Um, and you can also monitor comments. So let's say here the designer added some comments. I do not want them to stay there. I can also remove them. Um, and if uh, anytime there is a new comment added on the thread, everybody will get notified as well. So it's really to get the, that conversation going. Um, and to ensure that you know there is continuity and stuff doesn't get lost. Yeah, and these are two features I'm really excited about: um, collaboration and video annotations. In collaboration, this is just the beginning. Um, we already have you know a lot of iterations planned um, to make it more robust and and even better. So, uh, great great work by the team on on these two things. Definitely. Um, and I can end, I guess, with the, the, my favorite feature of Cloud App as well, which is adding a button. So th that was also one of, uh, one of the ones that I really wanted to bring up. So Max, you showed earlier how you were adding it to a bunch of different tutorial videos. Uh, when I, when I, when I was, what I want to show uh, you quickly is how you get, um, basically how you get set up. So whenever you visit uh, the, the page of content that you created, you have an option uh, called add button. Uh, some people call it call to action. We call it button just because it's simpler. Um, whenever you click on add button, uh, you have the ability to edit a button and see in real time on the left, um, you know, the button update. So um, let's set up a call. If you want to think of, okay, why would I be using button? You know, if you're a salesperson, I think it's great that whenever you get you send a video to a potential customer, you can directly add uh, a link to your Calendly, for example. So that's the example that I'm going to use today. This is my Calendly. This is the content that I created. I can just add the URL right here. Uh, the color can match my company design. You have a few options for customization. And as soon as you're done, you can do create button. So whenever you share that link, the viewer, so let's open it in a new tab, will see uh, that button. Uh, this will be linked to your Calendly right away so they can set up a call uh, and follow up on the content that you shared. 
Um, and this can be used in a, a really wide range of things. Like we use it on support videos, for example. You have a support video, but at the bottom, you really want to give uh, like a learn more button or some educational content that can enhance uh, the video. Um, so that's for buttons. Um, and I think I also wanted to give you a quick preview of an upcoming feature, which is annotations on the web. Um, is there any questions on add buttons so far or anything you wanted to add, Joe? Uh, no, we haven't had any a flurry of comments, but uh, no real additional questions that I haven't answered yet. Um, yeah, but lots of lots of good comments, which is great. We're, we're excited to, you know, sometimes people miss new features, so we're excited to be able to share these with you guys. The last one that I want to show you, um, so video annotations on the web. Um, if you are using Cloud App, a lot of users are actually on Chrome. Um, they may be on Linux. They may not have the uh, Cloud App for Mac or Cloud App for Windows. One feature that we recently added last week is that whenever you take a screenshot, so it opens instantly on the web, gets uploaded. Um, and we added the ability to annotate as well. So I just showed add button before. You can also click on annotate. Add the same kind of content, so arrows, highlighting, uh, as you can on the app. Click Save, and you're done. So it's a really short workflow to do uh, simple annotations. Take the link, uh, put it on Slack or email, um, and then you're going to see the annotations right away. So it, it's really a great way to communicate asynchronously um, and easily. Awesome. Thank you. I uh, got some nice little Easter eggs for everyone. Uh, some things to test out and try. Uh, again, this um, this uh, webinar is recorded, so you'll all get a chance to review this if you want to see it again. Um, we also have help docs on all of these things and um, usually pretty good blog posts for all of our releases of how you can use these things. So. Uh, feel free to connect with us, though, if you have other questions. Um, it looks like, let me share my screen. Um, so some key takeaways that you can kind of review in, in uh, what, once this recording is sent out to everyone. Uh, asynchronous communication being used a lot for speed and visual connection, uh, helping create more informed customers with higher satisfaction and you know, instance, uh, I'm sure Max and, and Finn as well. Video annotations, uh, adding deeper context to your videos, and then buttons, uh, helping show your customers what you want next from them or internal customers as well. Um, with that, let's see if we have any Q&A. Um, someone asked, do you use the show editor window after capture? Uh, why or why not? Um, I can start, I don't. Um, I found that I was not by default editing every screenshot I took. Um, I know Scott does. Scott is our CEO. Uh, maybe Finn, you can touch on it. Max and you know, share if you guys uh, do annotate by default or not. For sure. Uh, so Connor, I don't. But what I do is I use annotate. So uh, if I can share my screen again. Uh, what Connor is referring to is in the Cloud App settings in general, uh, you have two options. Either you open the browser after capture, which is basically opening this page, giving you a lot of different options, or uh, you show the editor window. Uh, the editor window is basically whenever you create a screenshot, you can uh, annotate. Um, the reason I don't use it is because we actually have two separate shortcuts that you can use. So what I do when I don't want to edit is I usually do command shift five without the editor window. And whenever I want to annotate, I either click on annotate or command shift A, which will anyway open the editor window. So the fact that we have two different shortcuts, one that shows the editor, one that doesn't, um, I think solves uh, my workflow. Cool. Max, you know, do you want to, I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to chime in on that. Kind of depends on, on the 
type of screenshot or, or recording that I'm taking. So if it's something that's like very intentional, like a, a training or something that I demonstrated before, I might edit or annotate in that moment. Um, but I'd say, you know, there's a lot of times where I'm on a Zoom call or, you know, someone else is presenting something and you want to grab a quick screenshot um, and having like the extra window open up is not, not what I need to show when I'm sharing my screen. So in those types of moments, I, I normally have that extra edit option turned off um, and I can always go back later in the day and, and kind of clean up my, my folder. Cool. Yeah, same. I don't uh, use it so often, but um, um, I use it as necessary if I'm not on a call with someone. Um, uh, otherwise, I would, um, I would if, and if I don't need to um, change the, the screenshot or a, or a GIF, then I would not use it anyway. Cool. Uh, next question for Finn. Um, <laughs> I'm not actually sure on this one. So Finn, with commenting, so if you send it to a someone who does not own Cloud App, don't, isn't it a is it a logged in feature to comment? I can't remember. For now, it's logged in. Um, yes. So for now, it's logged in, and you can edit the comment that you basically write, uh, and the owner can pretty much edit or or delete any kind of comment. In the future, we're exploring, you know, anonymous commenting. Um, but comments are mostly used at the moment internally. So usually also your teammates would have a Cloud App account and they'll be able to, uh, to you know, get part of the conversation. I also recommend an account just because everybody gets notified. So it's a bit better than anonymous commenting in my opinion, but we'll probably make it an option in the future. Yep. And um, someone, someone also asked about recording. Uh, can click a feedback button and record some comments, issue feedback, have it go into a ticketing system. Um, so that's that's definitely an integration that we've explored. Uh, we did have a JIRA integration previously, and then we moved to a new, more stable system that we're rebuilding integrations. Um, great question. Not currently available, but will be soon. Uh, let's see. As far as uh, someone asked about MonoSnap, um, how do we differentiate ourselves looking at the marketable aspects? Uh, we've always kind of been focused on speed, uh, stability, and then business value. So we, we focus a lot on privacy and security. So uh, you can send, you can secure a, a drop if you're a pro team or enterprise user and um, it can be password protected, it can disappear after 24 hours, uh, that type of thing. So we've always put our a focus on um, privacy and security, uh, which is important to you know, people who are sharing these with, with customers. Um, a couple of people actually asked, Finn, uh, will you be able to search with text in the image? Uh, have trouble finding the screenshot? Uh, that's something we're adding to. Do you want to add talk about that for a minute? Yes, for sure. So uh, text in image is definitely a feature that uh, we want at some point. Uh, th there's definitely no question about it. In the meantime, what I would uh, a workaround that I would actually give you um, is that we have something called screenshot drop naming. Um, and what this does is basically reading the different windows that you have open when you take your screenshot. So later on, when you go and search it, it's indexed, so you will be able to find it. So let's say I open, uh, let's do apple.com, and you do a screenshot. The name of your screenshot has the word Apple in it. Like we try to use the names of the windows. So let's say you want to talk about a specific Jira ticket or a ticket. Sometimes I'm able to search it, and it will actually show up. So it's not exactly OCR yet, uh, but it's actually using whatever content you have on your screen to auto name your screenshots. So they're easier to find. Cool. Uh, two annotation questions. Um, you, there, we do not have an undo button on annotations at the moment. What you can do, and maybe Finn, you could share this real quick, is you can just click on the underline, the arrow, the circle, whatever, and click delete. Yeah. Um, and that will remove it if you did something you didn't necessarily want to do. 
So uh, actually, I don't know if you're on Mac. Uh, whoever... and, and then also while you're doing this, someone asked about um, setting a default annotation color line width text size um, as a kind of pair of question. So undo and uh, saving preferences, let's say. Um, so what we added, actually, I think it was added recently. So it may just, you may just need to update your client. There is a few ways to undo. Um, here, let's say I'm doing a bunch of highlighting. We uh, did. Yeah, add, we have it on Mac. See, I'm on, I'm on Windows. I'm a little behind you guys. Coming soon. Coming soon. So <laughs> if I can give some context, whenever we release something on, on Mac, we do a bit of testing. We ensure it's working well. Um, we, we have it live in the hands of the user. And a few weeks or months later, uh, Windows is adding it. Um, but you can actually do an undo and redo. So yep. that's the change that we've done recently. You can also try Control Z, um, which uh, should also work as well. So if you're on Mac, you just need to update your client and that will be live now. And this should be available on Windows uh, soon. Exactly. And then um, the default, default colors. So as for the default color, we should save the last tool used and the last color you selected as well. So let's say here I'm using green and I'm doing, you know, this is uh, what I'm highlighting. I'm saving an annotation. Um, let's do another annotation on the CloudUp website. So green is selected and the circle is selected as well. If it's not what you see, reach out to us and, you know, we'll take a look. Um, but it, we, we always try to save as much of your workflow and preferences as possible. If they don't get saved, then there's probably uh, something else that may be happening. But um, yeah, this is what you should be seeing. And all of our Windows users, I, I'm, I'm, I use Windows. So um, a lot of it is to beta test things and make sure they work well. So I definitely feel your pain. We, we generally have been a um, primarily based on user base where we have mostly people on Mac using us. So that's why Mac is usually first and then Windows is usually shortly after. Um, and I don't know, in the past year, we've definitely made you know, some progress on yeah. bringing them up to par. Yeah, there, there's been a lot more focus on feature parity. So uh, when we announce you no know, video annotations, like Ben said, uh, Windows is usually close behind. Uh, and we do have a, a PM focus on Windows primarily. Um, so yeah. And there was a second part to Brian's question about um, adding a quick title mm -hmm. slide or snipping out unnecessary language or rambling like in videos, Finn. So like trimming and cutting. Yeah, so this is a feature that uh, is on both Windows and Mac. Um, whenever you have a, a video, so let's use my video from earlier. Um, in the, your file list, we call it. So in your list of videos, you should have an edit button on the uh, Mac and Windows lists. Whenever you click on that button, you we do have a trim and a cut feature. What these features do is basically trim, uh, is trimming some parts of videos. So let's say the end was messy. Let's just cut it out. Um, here, if I hover over the trim, you can see in red, that the red parts will be removed. If you're rambling in the middle of a video, that happens to everybody, especially me, <laughs> not an English uh, you know, native speaker like many. Um, so you can also select the part that you wanna remove um, and select the cut uh, option. This will basically remove those few seconds that you wanna remove. You click on share and this will save the edited video. Um, so th I guess that that should that should help you you know ensure that whatever content you're sharing works um, works for you and the quality is great. Another thing that I think is great to know is that we keep the URL link. So if you've already shared that link via email and then you notice that you made a mistake or you said something that wasn't uh, relevant, you can actually trim it, save it. Um, and for the end user, they won't see a difference. It's going to be the same same uh, link. Awesome. Okay, everyone. Um, 
I think we've wrapped up with questions. Thanks everyone for attending. Thanks Max and Minal and Finn for your time today. Uh, thank you all for being a part of the Cloud Up community. We're grateful for each and all of you and we're always trying to make things better. So please feel free to reach out to feedback at getcloudup.com. Um, and you know, we also have a public Trello board if you wanna see what we're kind of working on. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys.